No Fun the Jen Kirkman podcast. This is a Patreon bonus episode for Patreon members. I think I might, I think I might release it to the public for uh, the week of July 4th. Just as a special treat because I am trying to get y'all to join the Patreon because I need a certain amount to make it worth my while. And it's the half year check-in. And I, I, I have enough to make it worth my while, but on the low end. So this whole podcast, even the free 20 minutes goes away once there's not enough Patreon support. So I'm going to release this to the public. And I know the people paying for the bonus like, what the fuck? You'll be fine. You'll be fine. If you join the Patreon for $3 a month, you get the two full one-hour episodes of No Fun without ads. You can get it nowhere else, my friends. And you get, if you join at the $5 level, a extra 20-minute shorter bonus episode. So you get three episodes a month rather than two. And you will get additional bonuses, like I am going to be releasing audio clips from my one-woman show that I'm working on. Some of the clips are going to be parts of the show that... Uh, don't even stay in the show because it's a work in progress and I keep cutting material all the time. So you'll get random bonuses like that throughout the summer. And, you know, if I'm walking around Brooklyn and I make a video, that's all for the $5 level. I used to have it like some people get pay $10, some 15, some 20. It was too much to worry about. So it's just three or five. Five, you get a shitload. Three, you get the episodes. It's the only place you can get the show ad free, three bucks a month. I mean, come on. Okay. So These are comments from actual Patreon subscribers. Elizabeth says, I love getting bonus, Jen. Supporting one of my favorite artists brings me a great joy per dollar ROI. That's return on investment for you people. During the pandemic, when there were no tours to go to, I felt like I was still buying a ticket to see Jen through Patreon, but getting way more content than one ticket would buy. I loved the videos and getting to see your fun outfits and new apartment decor. I've been listening to Aunt Jen since 2012, and she got me through some tough times, a divorce, several existential crises, several moves, coming to terms with not wanting children. I'm always happy when I have a stockpile of her podcasts for a long trip, house cleaning, sesh, or long run. Going to go ahead and upgrade to the next level. I was fun when I first found Jen's podcast, but now I'm a rich bitch. Fuck the haters. See, those are private jokes from the podcast. I mean, maybe you know about them. Thank you for that review, Elizabeth. Let's read another one. Gen Z says, Jen's is the only podcast I'm willing to pay for. It's that good. Kevin Fitzpatrick says, oh, I'm not not supposed to say last names. I'm sorry, Kevin. Kevin, beep. I've been a fan of Jen Kirkman for many years and I've always enjoyed her comedy concerts. But I think I can say without hyperbole that being a patron of Jen Kirkman's podcast has changed me and it's changed me for the better. I've always considered myself a self-aware and empathetic individual, but I learned through the No Fun podcast and cool bonuses of being a patron that I don't know shit about a lot of things, including being a true ally to women. This is a world of deceit. And Jen is a voice I trust. She's wicked smart and wicked funny. And she also thinks that Che Diaz is a horrible person. We could all use more Kirkman in our lives. Thank you, Kevin. Sorry I said your last name. Mark says, I joined Jen's Patreon in spring of 2020 when the COVID lockdowns were in full force. That was a grim and bleak time, but the No Fun podcast and one of those live podcasts helped get me through my days. The entertainment, the humor, the opinions on many things in the world around us. I find there's always something of interest in these podcasts. I enjoy it when Jen talks about the craft of comedy. I find it fascinating to listen to creative people talk about how they do their work. And Jen's presentation is so personable, honest, and direct. Very good. I have to admit that I was late to the party in terms of being a serious fan of Jen's work. I had seen her on some late night shows as a diversion, but have come to really appreciate what she does over time. And this podcast is a big part of that. I went to see her live at Cobb's Comedy Club in San Francisco, a Sunday night in November 2019, primarily because of her TV writing. It was a good time, and I came to really admire and connect with Jen's comedy. I then later joined the Patreon. As I said, late to the party, but better late than never applies. I hope this podcast can keep going. I've always felt that it is worth the relatively small monthly fee 
very much. So, all right, I'll stop boring you guys with those comments there. So thank you, Mark. So on this bonus 20 minute episode, I find myself without even the spare 20 minutes to record it. It's nine o'clock at night. I have to get up at 5.30 a.m. tomorrow. Uh, I was doing a thing, the 5 a.m. club where you get up at 5 a.m., but I wasn't able to go to bed at nine and I need eight hours. So I usually get up in the six, six to seven area every morning. If I get up at seven, it feels late. Tomorrow's 5.30 a.m. because I have to drive somewhere early in the morning and I still haven't packed or finished working. So, you know, any minutes I can shave off my schedule, I will. And that is why I need all of your uh, commitment and support because I will I will sit down and do this podcast even when I have no fucking time. But I am changing my life this summer and making more time for things, as you've heard about if you're a Patreon subscriber. Anyway, but I was just at Target picking something up. Um, I'm... Going through, okay, I'm not even going to get into it and I'm going to kind of disguise what I'm saying because I don't even want any advice. So just know that I'm half telling, well, there's a truth. There's a medication situation and it's making my skin break out, but I'm going to craft a mild lie around it so that no one can give me advice. (laughs) I'm switching medications with something and it's causing some hormonal changes and one of the side effects is breakouts. And boy, is my skin breaking out in the weirdest way. My skin never breaks out because I'm on a medication that's supposed to help it not break out. But um, the situation I'm in is temporary, but it's very annoying because when you're an older lady or older anything, uh, when, when they talk about losing collagen in your skin, that's the thing that makes your skin like snap back. That's like babies have a lot of collagen. So you get a blemish when you're younger. It kind of clears up in a few days, not as red when you're older, it just like hangs around for weeks. And I've got all the remedies, but I'm telling you, it's not working. Fancy remedies, things that cost money that involve lasers. It's not fucking work. It just, it is what it is. is my face is going to be a little broken out this month. And so, you know, I'm going on a little thing to visit my family and I don't want to walk around with, these two like just eyesores literally on my face. Oh, hey guys, I'm Hallie Kiefer. And I'm Allison Libby. And we have a podcast called Ruined where every week we crack open a new and different horror movie to feast on the goo inside. Oh, I hate that. And I hate all horror movies. But even though I'll never watch any of them, I always want to know all of the twists and turns. And there's nothing I like more than watching horror movies and then telling Allison about them in gory, disgusting detail. Ugh, no thank you. But also like, yes, because this is the perfect podcast for scaredy cats like me. And blood lovers like me. So join us for Ruined and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. So I went to pick up these things at Target. You know those little spots you can put on your face that clear up a blemish? They make fun, cute ones now that are shaped like stars. So it just looks like you have a sticker on your face, which also, why would I have a sticker on my face? But hey, it's the <laughs> it's the 4th of July week. And you, you all know how patriotic I am, especially after um, the Supreme Court overturned Roe and basically told everyone to carry a gun and just see what happens. Oh, oh man, do I love America. But uh, I'm going to wear some stars on my face. So I had to go pick those up. I did the order ahead thing and you pick it up in the line. So as I'm in line, I'm like, what can I talk about in this bonus episode? I have so many topics and I'm not moved by any particular one. And so when I had to to go pick this thing up at Target, I wasn't sure if it had closed yet. So I went to the website and it was still open. But then I realized that this Target I go to in my neighborhood has a lot of reviews. This Target only gets two stars. (laughs) I thought I'd read some other reviews. Is this all she does on her podcast? Read reviews either of her own podcast or of a Target? I don't know. Put on Joe Rogan. I can't. What channel is Spotify? It's not a channel. It's a subscription. Well, how do you put that on? I want to hear his his take on, um, If I think they said aliens manufactured COVID at a at a bar in China. At a bar? Yeah, it wasn't a lab. It was a bar. Anyway. So this Target's kind of gross. Like, I don't even know what... I mean, when you get inside, it's fine. It's just in kind of like... I mean, listen, this little mall that it's in is not bad. 
you got a Uniqlo in there. You got a uh, Bath and Body Works, which really is just like, hello, we sell chemicals shoved in plastic to kill you and the environment as quickly as possible. But there's a MAC makeup store. You got a little, uh, I think there's a Victoria's Secret in there. Pick up a bra. I mean, it's got all like the basics. And I mean basic in like your basic kind of way. But, um, you know, it's not like a gross mall where it's like all out of date stores, like, you know, a Radio Shack. But it's just, it has this feeling. It's just like kind of in the air. Like there's literally no ventilation. It's not one of these like, Half in, half out outdoor malls. I mean, it's in Brooklyn. Why would there be any semblance of like, it's half outside because <laughs> we have winter here. But it just has a sticky, stuffy feeling. But when you're in the Target, it doesn't seem dirty. I mean, I wouldn't lick the floor, but I wouldn't lick the floor in Bloomingdale's. And um, like, I never have a problem with it. You know, like some places just skeeve you out. And you're like, you know, I really actually would rather drive the extra five miles to this other place. Well, I'm not driving here. It's it's very close walking distance from where I live. But I know what people mean. We're like, ugh, that Target's got like a gross vibe. But again, I've never been to a Target where I'm like, I'm in the lap of luxury, people. You know, it's a big store with a lot of things and a lot of people come through. And we're in a pandemic. And I think we're extra sensitive to the concept of germs. But anyway, I don't see the point in writing a review of a Target because to me, it's a necessary evil. You live near it, that's the one you're going to. You don't live near it, then you happen to drive by and you need something. I mean, it's Target. Should any of us be shopping there? So, but I just love the reviews. Like people, like, I mean, we all make time for stupid shit. You know, I'll scroll Twitter. I'll play design home on my phone. I'm not saying that every spare moment of mine is taken up with a worthy pursuit or worthwhile pursuit, but but I really think it is the height of you are making time for the wrong things, leaving a review for a target. Okay. I have a crazy gynecologist, by the way, who, well, I don't go to her anymore, but the reviews of her are insane. I don't get how this woman's not in prison. I sh- I'm going to read those after this. Okay. So <laughs> this person wrote, This is from Robert from 26 days ago. One star. It's not Target's fault this place is so bad. It's just very Brooklyn. Meaning, he writes in parentheses, people meandering in the middle of the aisles with no regard for others trying to walk past them, children screaming, suspicious teenagers who are often fighting outside the store, employees who are just trying to make things work, most people not wearing masks, which is just inconsiderate of the employees and their time, and a lot of stuff out of place. I love that he thinks this, all of this is specific to Brooklyn. People meandering in the middle of the aisles. That's, have you been to America? It's everywhere. Have you been to an airport, Robert? Uh, This is the kind of store that makes shopping online not only preferred, but compulsory. Okay, now this woman, Laura, very different opinion. I practically live in Target at this point. I buy all of my essentials, home decor, and some entertainment from here. They have just about everything I need. The staff are helpful, and the self-checkout lines generally move quick. Around the holidays, like Christmas and Valentine's Day, hmm, that's interesting that she considers that like the second major holiday, you see extremely long lines. During holiday seasons, staff work diligently to keep the lines moving and provide assistance when needed. I wouldn't say it's the best, but it's not the worst either. It's what you would expect from any other Target location. Okay, so these are good reviews. Let's get to one of the bad ones. The workers here, this is from Tashi T. The workers here are miserable and they are on a mission to make your day miserable too. Workers know they are being inexcusably rude and not justified either. And instead of apologizing or even doing what was requested, getting me an item that was locked away after waiting patiently for her to be done with other people without intruding, has the galls mm -hmm, to go on a power trip. Two can play that game or at that game as the saying goes, but that would mean I stooped to your level, Target. Just up your professionalism and be a decent, reasonable human. Yeah, Target, be a reasonable human. You should include that in your training, if there is one. I didn't get her name because she didn't want to give it, of course. Hope you resolve whatever is upsetting you so much in your life, lady in the electronic department. And I know you're all going to go, these are boomers. These are young people. Young people, because I see her photo. 
Maggie says, I'm not sure if they filter reviews or what, but I've written multiple bad reviews for this place and they keep getting deleted. I mean, again, Maggie, you register someone to vote, something, anything with your free time, but this, this badly built security guard lady, oh, well, that's mean, always singles out my friend and I. She goes through our Target bags and personal handbags after we pay every time we come. She ever checks, she ever checks anyone else's bags or never. Last year, this Target also denied us from entering because kids from another school got into a fight in their store. I DK what that got to do with us, but they let everyone else in fine. We ended up walking 35 minutes to the Target on decal for school supplies. Do not recommend this place at all. Maggie is a young white Karen in training. Okay. Paige says, yo, I hate this Target so much. This Target is so ratchet, just so much so. Every single time I'm there, there is either a fight or a shouting match. Most of the employees are nice, but the CVS pharmacy is filled with the most incompetent bunch of people I've ever had the misfortune of trying to get medicine from who have the nerve to get an attitude when they mess up your medication. Okay, she is right about that. That's happened to me. But I digress. I kid you not, every single time I have the misfortune of stepping into this Target, some middle-aged Susan is either shoplifting, two, quote, friends start duking it out over mascara, security is arguing with someone, somebody's trying to pop off at the register, or several employees are loudly having an extremely aggressive conversation with one another. The hell is in the air here? Please take me to the Target downtown or to the one in the burbs because I cannot... Usually in a nice, normal Target, my eyes light up and my wallet starts crying. But this one, this one, this is the only Target on the planet where I've been like, get me out of here. Also, I will say they don't have fresh produce at one at this one, which is weird. <laughs> What's in the middle of the city? So, My name is Paul Gilmartin and I am the host of the Mental Illness Happy Hour podcast where we have raw conversations about the stuff that's difficult to talk about out loud. It's made uh, best of lists and been praised by the New York Times, Esquire, Psychology Today. And I have on regular people, therapists, and famous people like Mark Marin, Tiffany Haddish, Katherine Hahn, and Rob Delaney. Check it out. The Mental Illness Happy Hour. A man named Fox says, Some of my reviews are controversial, and I've made myself a target, capital T, for backlash. This is a pretty average Target store, which is part of the big mall that's next to the Barclays Center in Brooklyn. They usually sell out of things a little faster than most of the Targets I've been to, which might be a New York City thing. Personally, I prefer the ones back in Houston. Well, it's, is that a helpful review? Sean is very upset. I went to this business to buy a winter coat, but instead got unbelievably bad service. The, quote, cashier refused to take my coat when I placed it on the counter to pay for it. Well, he, he did get a coat, though. He got a coat and bad service, but he still got his coat. Then she stared at me without speaking a word. When I finally got a chance to pay for it, the, quote, cashier only removed one of the anti-theft devices and left the other one on, which I had removed the next day when I went back to the store. But before I left the store during the first visit, she tried to stuff my winter coat into the small Target bag that you see everyone carrying. What a trip. I am going to other Targets from now on. I may stop going to Target altogether. <laughs> I don't know why cashier was in quotes both times. I guess he was saying, you know, because she's not a good cashier or he, but it doesn't mean they're not a cashier. My God, I really wish I was a college student auditioning for college because I would do something funny, like do these things as a monologue to get into acting school instead of like the dumb monologue I did. Uh, let's see. This, Justin says, this is the worst target. The managers are incompetent, specifically Melissa. There was an item that was priced wrong, and instead of honoring it, they informed me because it was over 50% off, they couldn't honor it. They then went on to make me feel like I was in the wrong because I didn't read the small print of the labels and that it was a, quote, display item. An absolute joke how small-minded the workers are here. <laughs> it's absolutely your fault. It said it was a display. <laughs> small-minded. Like, that's not even the right expression. But, oh, I'm obsessed. K 
this is literally from a Karen. She is a middle-aged white woman. I had recently been to Target and my experience there wasn't so pleasant. When I was walking in, I was on my phone texting my grandchildren about their day at school and walked into a giant red ball in the front. I had ran inside to get the manager because of my horrible accident. The manager said he didn't care about my injury and said it was my fault. I told him he should get his job done correctly and he should be ashamed of his astonishing behavior with nice and beautiful customers like me. Anyways, besides the horrible workers, I needed a bathing suit for my daughter's wedding. They are having it at the beach and I needed a bathing suit. I also needed sunblock because I don't want my face to look like my toast I had burnt this morning. The price came out to $30 and said this place was a ripoff and left my overall experience in Target wasn't good anyways, going to go to Walmart for bathing suits instead. Whoa! Ha! Woo! Karen's off her meds. Also $30 for a bathing suit. And SPF? Honey, that's a deal. Some SPF is like 60 bucks on its own if you go to where the rich bitches shop for that face, SPF. Oh my God. <sighs> 